We're going to start our study of statistics in chapter one, and we're going to be looking at data analysis. How do we make sense of data? So we're going to start out by looking at our objectives for this section. There are two. The first one is we want to be able to identify the individuals and the variables in a set of data. And we also want to be able to classify those variables as either categorical or quantitative. Just want you to notice that we have some new vocabulary here listed on our objectives that we're going to be going through our, it, as we go through the notes. First of all, statistics is the science of data and data analysis. And data analysis is the process of taking the data, organizing it, displaying it in a graph, summarizing it in a table, and then trying to gain some intelligence or draw some conclusions with our data. When we have data, we typically look at characteristics of individuals. So to give you an example, if I wanted to get to know my statistics classes this year, I might ask them to answer questions in a survey. Survey questions might include things like, are you left-handed or right-handed? And what is your height? Now, the different students about whom I would be asking the questions would be the individuals in the data. The characteristics about the students are the variables in the data. So if you have more questions about that, ask me in class. Now, when we talk about variables, we're going to be looking at two different kinds of variables this year. The first one is what we call categorical. And a categorical variable is when you ask the question, is your answer words or is it numbers? And in general, if the answer is in words, it's categorical. An example might be, are you left-handed or right-handed? The answer is either going to be left or right. If you're asked, what is your favorite academic subject? The answer is going to be probably math, but it might be something like social studies or science or English. So all of those answers are categorical answers. So therefore, what favorite subject is a categorical variable that can take on different values, such as math or science or English. The other kind of variable that we would have would be quantitative or numerical. And this is where you are asked, for example, your height or your weight or your blood pressure. All of these are quantitative variable. In general, if it's something that we can either count or measure, we know it's going to be quantitative. Every once in a while, we have variables that are disguised. They look like quantitative or numerical variables, but they are not. They are actually categorical variables. One example might be your phone number. We know that we would never multiply phone numbers together. We would never divide or subtract them. So they're not truly numbers, even though they are, they appear as numbers. They're really a type of address that the phone system uses to access your piece of equipment, your phone. So when we analyze data, we know that the different variables can take on different values. For example, what is your favorite color? The answer could be red or blue or silver. So the different values that the variable can take on are the reason that we call it a variable because that varies for different answers. Different answers will vary the value of the variable. Now, one of the things that we're very interested in and we want to be able to kind of uh, paint a picture with our data. So we're interested in graphing. And what that means is we want to be able to determine how often each of the values is used in a set of data or how many times a particular value of that variable happens. This is what we call a distribution. So it tells us what values the variable takes on and how often it will take on those values. So here's an example where we have a lot of different individual vehicle models and we have the miles per gallon for that particular vehicle model. So the individuals are the individual cars the variable mpg is a numerical miles per gallon variable and it can take on a lot of different values so what we might want to do is create a graph and one of the most basic graphs that we'll be using this year is called a dot plot and the dot plot as you can see we start out with the lowest value and we go to the highest value and then in perfectly even rows 
the dots begin to accumulate for the different values. Just going to point out here also that our graph, our dot plot is labeled and scaled. So each of those even numbered values, 14, 16, 18, are the same distance apart so that we get a really good look at what our data looks like on a graph. And we've labeled MPG, miles per gallon, uh, on the axis so we know exactly what our data is about. Now, very often we're not interested in just the individual values, but we, we want to see what patterns are visible in our data. So we want to see what the relationships are. And if we start with a graph, such as the miles per gallon, one of the things that we might be interested in is what is the mean miles per gallon? Or what is the maximum miles per gallon? What is the minimum miles per gallon? And other values that we can get from our calculator. So that's something that we're all going to be looking at numerical summaries as we go through chapter one. So here we go again, new vocabulary words. One of the things that we want to be able to do is determine what population are we interested in and how do we learn about that population. So for example, let's say that we wanted to know the average height of all of the high school students in the whole world. It would be very difficult for us to go out and measure the height of every single high school student in the whole world. So instead of looking at the entire population of individuals, which means every member in that set, what we would do is we would take a sample. So we would be able to use a subset of the individuals in that, in that population and gain information about that whole population. So that's what we're going to be doing this year in statistics, and that's what's done in business as well. In medicine and lots of other, other areas, we collect data from a representative sample, and, and there's a lot that goes into this, so we'll see more about it later on. But we collect data from a representative sample, a good sample so that it looks very similar to the distribution in our population, and we perform data analysis on that sample so that we can make an inference about the entire population. And this is the flow from descriptive statistics to inferential statistics. And we will be looking at both this year. So here's a summary of what we've accomplished so far in section 1.0. We know that a data set contains information about individuals and the data is given in terms of variables and the different variables that describe the individuals can either be categorical or quantitative, a numerical or a, a categorical variable. How often each of those values for each of the different types of variables or each of the different variables takes on, we know that that will create the distribution. And the distribution is generally going to be a, shown in a graph or displayed in a graph. And inference is what we do when we take a sample and a, rep a good representative sample, and we draw conclusions about our entire population. This is going to do it for section 1.0, and sorry about that, didn't mean to press that, but we will start again in section 1.1, so we'll see you then.